Hi, I'm Charlie. Today we're gonna to install a atmospheric tank float switch. Typically, if you buy an atmospheric tank to go in conjunction with your RO system, you're gonna need some type of float switch to shut the RO off once the, the tank is full. This float switch will also turn the RO on once the tank level comes down. Today we're gonna to install into a 265 gallon tank. It's pretty obvious it's tall, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it on the side so we can get a better idea of what we're, we're trying to do. Typically when you're going to install into one of these tanks, you want to find a nice flat surface to mount your float switch to. Now sometimes the tank will be beveled on the top and that's fine just as long as it's not domed too much. This is just sealing to keep things in the atmosphere out of the tank. It's not really intended to be a watertight seal because it's going to be on top of the tank where basically the water level will never reach. Now the float switches that we sell are going to come with a standpipe with a one inch bulkhead fitting and that one inch bulkhead fitting is gonna require a two inch hole. So what we use is a two inch hole saw. Now, when you drill this hole, you wanna take care not to get a lot of shavings down in there. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll drill to where I'm just about to be through there, clean all the shavings out, and just go that last little bit through there and it really eliminate, eliminates the amount of shavings you'll end up with in the tank. So we're just gonna start here first. We're gonna drill a two inch hole. And this particular tank has some nice flat areas for us to be able to install this float switch. And I'm gonna choose one of those. Once you have the, the hole drilled, typically open up the tank and then remove the shavings. Um, the best way to do this is to use like an old rag because you can put an old rag down in here and this rag will actually collect these shavings. It'll want to stick into the actual rag, as you can see. It makes it a little easier to try to get it out of there instead of trying to use your fingers and grab it. This rag will actually statically grab a lot of that stuff for you. But once you've got the shavings out, your hole's in place, then we're going to install the float switch. Now when you install the float switch on the bulkhead fitting, there'll be a nut. You're going to spin this nut off completely. You're gonna take your cord, run it through the tank and through the hole. You can go ahead and put your nut back over top of it now because that nut's gonna wait there until we get the switch completely installed. Pull your wire completely through. Stick your whole float switch in the tank. Pull it through, pull your float switch through and install the nut. Usually tighten that tent hand tight, maybe go just a little bit more with some channel locks just to make sure it's nice and snug and it's not going to rotate or loosen up. Once the tank is in, the float is installed in the tank, if your float was shipped with a shipping cable tie, you're going to want to cut that tie off and get it out of your way. Um, otherwise the, the float won't operate properly. Now on this particular system, if you look here, you can see that we have a strain relief fitting here. The strain relief fitting can be loosened, and once it's loosened, then you have the ability to adjust the, the float up and down. Now you want to make sure that you don't adjust this down so far that when the stroke comes up, the float hits the side of the tank, because that will inhibit its ability to work properly. Once you have it adjusted properly and that's tightened down, then we can stand the tank back up. Once you have the tank back upright, <clears throat> your, your float switch is gonna ship with an, an enclosure box. This particular float switch is designed for what's called tank level inputs. So there's really nothing in the box. It's basically just running your, your float switch in and then you'll run your tank level wires into the top. You'll connect them accordingly and then put your cover on. Now some of these float switches will come with an outlet configuration for like a standard system that doesn't have tank level inputs. When you use that system, there'll be an outlet as well as a power cord that comes out here to supply this whole system as well as the RO. Each one of these tanks switches are shipped with instructions to explain how to wire them together. Typically when you open this box, that instruction will be in here in a little Ziploc bag that you can open and it'll explain exactly how to wire this up. 
But in a nutshell, this is how you install the float switch. If you have any other questions about this, you can call us. Um, it's pretty simple to deal with. Um, just wanna make sure you use the proper sizings, get things tight, keep things clean.